Mazin Nandikanu's lawyers chat course as court trials lingers. Welcome back to this wonderful channel where I'll bring you back-to-back -back updates and information. In case it's your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, you kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, it will be the first. We will collect them. Let's go down to the information of the day. As the trial of Nam De Kanu, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, continues to linger, judges' withdrawal from his case is rising concerns. The Nigerian government has been prosecuting Kanu since 2015. He is standing trial for several charges ranging from treasonable felony to terrorism. In 2017, Justice Bintanyako of an Abuja Federal High Court granted him bail in the sum of 100 million, but the IPO leader absconded from Nigeria after the military alleged invaded his residence in Afaruku, Abia State. Khan was, however, rearrested in July 2021 in Kenya and subjected to extraordinary rendition back to Nigeria where he was rearranged on charges bordering on terrorism. In October 2022, the Court of Appeal in Abuja discharged and acquitted Kano of all the 15 count charges, describing them as illegal and unlawful. The court held that the federal government breached all local and international laws by subjecting the Biafra agitator to extraordinary renditioning from Kenya to Nigeria, a situation that makes the terrorism charges against him incompetent and unlawful. However, however, the Supreme Court ruled that Kano should return to Nigeria court and face trial afresh. A report has it that a total of three judges have stepped down from handling Kano's trial since its inception in 2015. In December 2015, Justice Ahmed Mohamed stepped down from Kano's trial after the IPO builder said he had no confidence in him. In September 2016, Justice John Tosho of the Federal High Court in Abuja pulled out of Kano's case in a petition. His then lawyer Ifan Ejofo sent to the National Judiciary Council, NJC, Kano accused Justice Tosho of judicial rascality and called for the council to investigate the judges, judge for giving parallel judgment on the same issue. Following the petition, Justice Tosho, who stepped down from the case, said, Even if I am cleared of any bias by the NJC, I will not continue with this case. In September 2024, Justice Bintanyako of Abuja Federal High Court also rescued herself from Kano's case following his declaration of lack of confidence in her. Despite argument from the federal government's lawyer, Adegboyeye Aolowo, Justice Nyako has said, I hereby rescue myself and remit the case file back to Chief George. But Kano's lead counsel, Aloy Ejimako, said the decision of judges to rescue themselves on Kano's trial was evidence that judiciary was having a hard time. Speaking with Daily Post, Ijumako said three judges have been withdrawing from Kano's trial since its inception in 2015. This is affirmative evidence that judiciary is having a hard time or a conflict with, with coming to a verdict that Kano committed any real offense. Another incident that demonstrates the conflict within the judiciary is the acquittal by the Court of Appeal that was reversed by the Supreme Court on reasons that do not comport with the good law. Yet, another point of judicial conflict in the case is the inexplicable refusal of Justice Binta Mutalanyako of the Federal High Court to abide by the finding of the Supreme Court that Kano did not jump bail. These anomalies have posed complexities that are not supposed to be allowed in a society governed by rule of law and fundamental fairness. Ejimako said the IPO leader must be treated in accordance with the Constitution. He added that if the Supreme Court restored Kano's bail, judges would need to step down. To break what you call a jinx of judges rescuing themselves, 
all that is required is for Kano to be treated in accordance with the law and the constitution. For instance, he is not supposed to be detained at the DSS where his preparation for trial are hampered by the monitoring of his conversation with his lawyers and interdiction of his confidential legal documents. Sometimes, the DSS even block his lawyers from meeting with him. He is supposed to be detained in prison or a correctional facility that does not engage in such unconstitutional acts. Another fair way is for his bill to be restored as the Supreme Court held. This is even better because a court of judge or judge that refused to follow the Supreme Court and restore Kano's bill is unlikely to give him a fair trial. One might also add that it is up to the government of the day to discontinue a trial that has become a batros and a blight that make this administration look like the infamous one is succeeded, he, had, he added. On his part, activist lawyer Madu Abuchi Idam suggested that with a fair trial, judges would need to rescue themselves from Kano's trial. Idam told News, the only thing here is a fair trial, where the trial is seen to be fair and not just fair, where the trial is just and speedy, where there are no needless delays on the part of the state. You can see that the state has made a series of applications for amendment of the charges. Those amendments led to the matter to be protracted. The delay was occasioned by Nam De Kano or his team, but by the state. When you have that delay, many things would have lasted. The period the case lasted in Justice Nyako's court. It could have been concluded without needing to get to this point. The case has lasted in that court for many years, whereas the case could have been concluded within a few months. The state is not interested in giving Kano a fair trial, but only interested in getting him thorough or endure experience. Two or three months is enough to conclude the trial. The continued prosecution of Nam De Kano, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB, has not solved any problem or security issues in Nigeria. The state has a right to enter a law called Null Prosec, a constitutional right given to the Attorney General to decide to discontinue a case instituted by the federal government. Anybody undergoing criminal prosecution is undergoing that at the instance of the state. The Attorney General can decide to prosecute two out of ten people for a crime and nobody will question him for not prosecuting the others. He can decide to withdraw the same case along the way. It is sad and honorable thing for the judge to rescue herself from a case if the judge entertains an application requiring her to rescue herself especially when such an application is meritorious. Ejimako also noted that Kano's case is still open to both political and judicial solution. The two parties you mentioned, political solution and the judicial solution, are foreclosed. They are still open and ongoing. Presently, the legal team is working quietly to ensure that Kano's case is treated in accordance with the constitution, equity and good conscience, he added. Similarly, Aidan said President Bola Tinubu might be considering touring the part of a political solution. He suggested that the president might be consulting with relevant stakeholders on the need to consider a political solution in Kano's case. I don't want to believe that a political solution has failed because there is no limit to exploring a political solution. All right, my wonderful people, I don't see as that matter they go concerning uh, Mazin and the Kano Ahmadike. One of Ndibo Odogwana Manzuna. Uh, remember that yesterday uh, we be, uh, we be the uh, Independence Day, uh, the IPOB members want Ndibo not to celebrate the Independence Day. Uh, let's go down to the information. As the trial of Nam the Kano, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB, continues to linger, judges withdraw from his case is is raising concern. Uh, the members of the IPOB has warned 
that um uh, the the uh, 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 Bia France uh, should not uh, uh, celebrate the 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 Independence Day. Uh, the indigenous people of Biafra has banned the celebration of Nigeria's 64th Independence uh, Day in the Southeast region. In a statement on Monday, the separatist group declared that anyone found participating in any activity making this year's Independence Day will be considered an enemy of the land. It said Igbo should go about their normal businesses or remain in their houses if they choose to, but must re refrain from any form of activities to mark Nigeria's independence. The group insisted that though Igbo were part of the struggle for Nigeria's independence, the union had proven injurious to them. A directorate of, of state of the global family of the movement of the indigenous people of Biafra wishes to remind Biafrans at home and in the diaspora that the ban on the celebration of the Nigeria's annual October 1st Independent Day by Biafrans is still in force as a Biafran, you are to avoid any Nigeria Independent Day celebration globally. <laughs> Um, everybody the verse uh, because uh, if the government is actually working and if the government is working to better the life of the people, uh, recently the government just borrowed 1.5 billion dollars and also 70 billion dollars grant was given to the government of Nigeria. And um, I'm wondering who is going to pay all this money, uh, maybe by the time all of us pass away. Our great 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 grandchildren will still be paying the debt uh, that the past, past, and the present government are owing World Bank and other institutions that borrow money to the nations uh, because the government has failed. When a government fails to be productive, uh, la uh, rather being productive, when a government choose lavishing rather than being productive, that is always the the outcome of things like that you can see that nigeria is becoming poorer by the day and inflation is getting higher by the day that is to show a failed government the prices of things are skyrocketing uh, the prices of uh, fuel prices of food commodities prices of clothes and everything you can think about they are all increasing in rate and um, this is not uh, what you can just sit down and watch. Meanwhile, let me wind down the curtain here. Uh, and if this is your uh, first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, and comment. See Nigeria, and business, business, business. Yeah.